action, this automatic pilot, it's the automatic response that we have. Yes, it's true. Of course it's true. I'm feeling stressed because I've got to, you know, go to school online. Are you sure? Is there any other way of seeing this? So we're just starting to explore a little bit, like, well, what else is, is good here? How does it show up in the body and the mind? How, is, how are we actually experiencing this, this stress? And what's the storyline? So we can really start to explore the narrative around this. Well, you know, you can even write it out. Well, because it's difficult, because I'm at home, I've got siblings, the internet doesn't work properly, the computer's a bit old. Da, 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 da. What would it be like to let go of this story, like that it's only negative? Is there anything positive in there? And if you could just let go of it a little bit, this narrative, this story that's driving the emotion, what benefits might you feel? So there's no real right and wrong here. I mean, and that's the thing with mindfulness. One's perspective, one's uh, point of view, one's um, reflections on how you feel are just how you feel. And it's really important as teachers to, to just allow that space to be open, okay? There's no, there's no right or wrong. And this is kind of a bit unusual because usually in the classroom experience, it's like getting the answer right. And it's really important to sort of preface all of these things with there is no right answer because ultimately your experience is your experience. But what we're doing is starting to notice our experience rather than just allowing it to be the automatic pilot, the, the always and forever narrative, and start to just question it a little bit. Because if our thoughts, which are negative, are creating negative outcomes and uh, stress and anxiety, wouldn't it be interesting to start taking that apart a little bit and exploring it in some way? Because ultimately, you know, we do want to feel better, don't we? And when we get stuck, we want to find ways to be able to get ourselves out of this. So if we look at the present moment, we have this terrible push and pull scenario, which all humans more or less on the planet have, which is, I don't want this, whatever it is, teaching online, working online, I want something else. I want what we used to have. I want a better scenario. I want a different person teaching me, uh, being in my classroom, etc., etc. And we can get really tight around that because here's reality and this is how I want it, okay? Now, when reality and how I want it are the same, we feel okay. But when reality and how we want things are different, guess what? There's a bunch of stress there, okay? So we can start to do something with that because we can't always control the situation. If we can control it and we can change it, then obviously do that. But if we've got a situation like lockdown, like COVID, like teaching online or all the restrictions in schools that we can't actually do anything about, then what we can start to do is to start noticing our thoughts. Hmm, what is the storyline around this scenario right now? Okay, because we can notice our thinking. So in one moment, I kind of, this is my finger puppets moment, it's like in one moment we're in a stress pattern, okay? We're, we're with our thoughts, we're going, this is not right, this is not right, this is not right. And then there's a moment we can step out and we can watch this spinning happening. Oh my God, look at me, I'm getting really stressed out. This stuff, well, look at that's interesting. And that's the key. Because instead of getting stuck in the thoughts, you start to become uh, the witness or the observer to the experience. Oh, look, I've got angry thoughts in my head. I'm starting to feel, ooh, what would I call that? A burning sensation in my chest. I'm feeling hot. Ah, okay. What could I do to help myself in this moment? <sighs> Maybe there's a few of those tools. Breathing, feeling my feet on the floor, calming myself down. So in that way, we start to look after ourselves in these stressful moments and also start to um, find a way of dealing with whatever's coming up in a much more calm and wise place, a place of wisdom, rather than that knee-jerk reaction. So you know that, you know that scenario, you're angry, you're frustrated, uh, someone's been rude to you, you say something rude back, or you quickly tap down an email and send it and then you know, repent at your leisure. It's like just before all of that happens and we start to get reactive to a scenario, let me calm myself down, bring myself back to the present moment and see what's actually happening. Because quite often in the present moment, it's actually okay. Very rarely are these high dramas actually happening. 
we're just sitting here. We're just in front of our computer, our desk. But mentally, we're creating a bucket of stress for ourselves. You know, all of this worry and concern. And, you know, we take that to bed with us at night, three o'clock in the morning, we're still chewing over the problems. And yet, actually, where are you? In the present moment, all you are doing is lying in bed. That's all that's actually happening. So to be able to calm the body, to let it relax, to help it feel safe, so it's not in fight and flight mechanism, that it's back calm, is really, really useful. Okay. So we can start to question our thoughts a little bit. You know, thoughts are real, but are they true? Is it all completely true what I'm telling myself about this situation? Or could I see it in some other way? Okay, can I get some perspective on what I'm thinking about? Okay, and on top of that, we can also do something else. So we have this negativity bias, which is which I'll talk about later. But you know, we we have a tendency to look for the problems because it's part of our survival um, technique. Okay, the good stuff goes for me, whilst the worrisome stuff makes us spin around for a good reason, because we really need to worry about that thing, in theory, to make us feel safe again. But actually, that can get really out of balance. So gratitude really starts to, um, you know, talk about like, you know, what they say, sort of 80% of our thoughts are negative. It's like, well, let's actually actively create some positive thoughts as well. Okay, they don't naturally come. We have to go out and find them, which is where gratitude can come in. And it can really help change our mood. Okay, so, oh, little kitty. So you can, let's do this right now. Ask yourself, what is good in this moment? What do you appreciate right now? Okay, and again, if you want to put something in the chat, and it could just be, I don't know, just sitting here, doing something for myself, appreciation for this body, being healthy, being fit, I'm alive and safe, everything is perfect, doing something for myself, yeah. So right now, the sun is shining, for example, if it is in your part of the world, it's kind of quiet in the room, it's quite pleasant, it's actually okay. And the problem is, these okay moments just get ignored. They're just like, they're just sort of wallpaper of our lives. And yet actually, when we're not calm and safe and healthy and warm, boy, do we know about it, right? So to be able to actually appreciate what's already here is really, really powerful. And then you can also extend that out of this experience into bringing in what makes you, you know, appreciate what you've got in your life, your family, your friends, your health, your hobbies, your pets nature, going for walks, swimming, whatever it is that you love, um, recognizing the talents that you have, the things that you're good at, your hobbies. Okay. Again, and just you know, having an idea of like, how does this make me feel when I really consider there's actually quite a lot of good stuff in my life. Because interestingly, when we get into fight and flight mechanism, if you think about it, we get very tunnel vision. Okay. So uh, you know, when we're obsessing about the numbers over COVID or, or I don't know how the school year is going to go, not knowing how we're going to deal with it all, we get very tunnel vision. And that's for good reason, because if you think about fight and flight mechanism, when you're running along being chased by a tiger, you don't want to be looking at the countryside and going, well, that's lovely. I haven't seen that tree before. You absolutely <laughs> running straight forward and going, I've got to escape. I've got to escape. Okay. So we get tunnel vision, quite literally. And so this gratitude allows us to become much more open, much more aware of the other things that are happening here, okay? And on from that, um, so obviously this is something you can do for yourself and something that students can do. Um, potentially, obviously this may or may not be suitable, but also a sense of service. Because when we get into our negative stress patterns, we become very obsessed about ourselves and how we feel. And actually moving outwards and considering how I can help other people, who can I help, can also really get us out of our little bubble and out into the world. And helping other people really is a win-win situation. We help them and we feel good about helping them and they feel good because they've been helped, okay? So service to others 
um, can be another really great way of breaking that um, of cycle of negative thinking within ourselves.